Okay, a lot of people seem to be here already, so uh, we just passed the hour, so uh, let's make a start. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are. <clears throat> and welcome to uh, clinic number 11, uh, Solid Edge Tips and Tricks. Uh, this is the first uh, clinic for 2012, and we'll be covering uh, a lot of material, not in extreme depth, but just some uh, small things that'll help you with your day-to-day -day work. Uh, just getting an understanding for some of the stuff that's uh, been there for a long time, uh, maybe not used a lot, um, and some things that uh, we've recognised over time people have had uh, some uh, one or two issues with. Okay, uh, first on the list is uh, you can bring in parts from outside or you can actually bring them up from your own libraries that come up as um, construction geometry. You can usually tell that very quickly by the colour. It's that uh, purpley colour that we see there. And there's also a checkbox next to the geometry. Now, the question becomes, uh, how do we deal with this geometry? Let's have a look in Solid Edge, uh, because it's not a solid at this point. Uh, traditionally, um, we had some tools to make uh, Make the make a uh, const make construction geometry a base feature. Uh, that's not present with synchronous. But if we select the uh, the feature here, right click on it, we will see we've got oh, excuse me the right click menu come up, and we've got uh, the attach command. What that is is attaching this um, construction geometry to another solid or itself. So we're just going to add this, and if I click on the add we'll see it turns itself into a solid body. That's really all there is to it. It's uh, quite straightforward. Many of you uh, have been using Solid Edge for some time, uh, have been aware that uh, you can use the middle mouse button uh, or the, the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And that, that can be quite useful. And you can also use it for changing a dimension. With ST4 we made a change to the way that operates in as much as you, had to, you have to hold the, uh, the cursor over the dimension value in the dimension edit box to affect the, uh, the cursor change, otherwise it'll zoom in and out. Um, let's take a look at, uh, at Solid Edge to see what I'm uh, talking about. <coughs> So if I select this dimension, the dimension value comes up, and if I now point my uh, cursor out onto the screen somewhere and roll the cursor, we'll see it zooms. Now I'm zooming away. Now, if I go to the cursor, uh, point to the dimension, we get the, the little dimension value glyph up. As I change that, as I roll the cursor, uh, roll the middle mouse button you'll see the value change. Now if we want to change that behavior so that the value is edited regardless of where my cursor is pointing, and that's useful if you've got a 3D controller like I have, a 3D connection or a, um, an asteroid, then it's very simple. It's just a matter of going to Solid Edge Options and the in the General tab Coming down here you'll see Enable Value Changes using the mouse wheel. So if I click on that and apply it, say OK, now I click the dimension value and I can place my cursor elsewhere on the screen and change that value. And you'll see it change. So that reverts, if you like, to the behavior before ST4, which some people may prefer. So there we go, Solid Edge Options, Enable Value Changes using the mouse wheel, uncheck it <coughs> for the ST4 behavior. Okay. Templates. Um, we've, we get this asked quite often. When, the, uh, when you see the opening screen here, how do I change which templates I have up here? and that's under the Edit Create, create Options. So again, let's just take a quick look at that. I uh, don't need to see that anymore. 
and I can minimize that one. And let's just wait till the screen catches up on the on the webinar here. It takes a few seconds. I'm going to click on this Edit Create Options, and I get a form up here that allows me to browse for templates. I'm going to go down to the Browse button. Uh, I'm going to go to the More, and we'll scroll down and get something that's uh, unusual. Let's say the you and I Weldment template. Say OK to that. What are we going to call it? And I'll call it uh, U N I W E L D U N I Weld, and I'll say OK to that. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Just get a little bit further. Got a little bit ahead of myself there. Sorry about that. There's a button here that says Add. Uh, it always plays to, pays to read the screen. So if we hit the Add, it puts it down the bottom. Now if I want to move that up to being the first one in there, I just type, tap on the Move Up. So it's gone, you see it moving up to the top. We say OK to that. And when we return to our startup screen, there it is. So if we want to change that, get rid of that, I can just highlight it and say Remove. OK to that, and everything's back to normal. The other way we can affect this is again using Solid Edge Options. I'm bringing up the Options screen, and under Helpers, we will see that Edit Create Options again. Edit Create Options again. Same dialog, so I won't go through that again. But there's one underneath that that says Set Default Templates. Now, <clears throat> these are the templates that you that are used. Uh, when you're translating parts on import. You must have these templates and the default settings are usually fine. If we look uh, here at the default settings, we can see the part template is C program files, solid edge ST4 template, ISO part. You may have some templates on a server that you want to use. You can change those here, browse for the ones that you want. So just be aware that you can ch they're independent of each other. These are the um, templates that are specified to be used automatically. So just be aware of that. Okay, when you're bringing parts into an assembly, um, you're probably not aware that you do have control over the configurations. Um, what does this mean? Let's have a look. So if I just uh, open up a new assembly, Go to my parts list and let's pick that transaxle there. And I'm just going to, as you normally do, I'll just drag that in. And we'll see that's uh, brought that component in. I'm just going to move that to one side. So what we've got there, if we look in the assembly, we've got all the parts turned on. OK, let's go back to the parts library. And if I right click in the white area of the parts library, we get this menu up. I'll just wait for that to come up. And you can see what you want to be dealing with here is use configurations. If we check that, now I drag this um, transaxle in again. I'll get a configuration dialog come up saying use configuration. Which configuration do I want to use? I've got one in there called No Wheel. I can all active. I, I can also um, uh, adjust the activation override by activating all the parts or inactivating all the parts when it comes in. In this case, I'll leave it as activated, and say OK. And what we see there is the the same transaxle brought in, but this time with some components turned off depend on the configuration I had. We'll see that those components are still there, but they're just simply hidden or turned off in that configuration. And we can turn them back on, of course, from here if we want to, or affect the configurations. That one can be quite useful. Um, probably not aware of this. It's only a little thing, but um, if we return to our uh, interface here, if I just put my cursor up on the top of the screen, just somewhere on the on the ribbon bar, 
and use the center mouse button to scroll it will scroll across the tabs you can see those updating as I scroll across uh, something my recording software is playing up with me this brings up another point um, what we might want to do is I'm just going to click on the customize um, button here on my quick on my quick links you see if you're updating here we've got a slight pause in the update if I click on the customize button um, on the the little pull down next on my uh, top line here uh, what I want to do here is minimize the ribbon because we don't really need to see the ribbon up there all the time we'll work with that that way let's go back to our slides there's a common issue that people have from time to time uh, especially with ST4 um, with the new excuse me with the new graphics uh, system that we've got with um, mirrored floors and uh, something we've had for a long time with perspective on it can be very difficult to select things with, pers with perspective on and this has always been the case but it's more so now with some of the prettier graphics and faster graphics cards so what happens here is that we've got um, let me just bring up the part for you uh, an issue with uh, the way things want to select so just as I open this part file um, we'll see we've got mirrored floor on and that's fine and we've got quite a bit of perspective <coughs> shown in this uh, in this in this example it's going to activate a couple of things I'll turn my ribbon bar back on because of the uh, my system slowed down a bit Okay, let all the uh, everything catch up. Go to my select tool. Um, and if I try to um, let's just position my uh, steering wheel on that hole, and then I want to use the button here and if you notice I'll just move off a little bit so you can see it you notice how the golden uh, button is displaced from the uh, the real steering wheel it'll take a second or two to update it seems to be uh, fairly slow updating at the moment now I click on that and I try and move this over to the hole and I just cannot find that hole because with pers perspective on what you see on the screen and what the graphics are actually pointing to are dislocated from each other so I'll go up to the tools the uh, view menu up the top and I there's a perspective icon there I'll just turn that off just waiting for the uh, screen to update there for you so I can see where I am I'm just going to turn off the perspective now perspective is off and if I just hover over the hole there you'll see the glyph come on with the indicator showing that I've found the center and there it is so it's just as simple as turning off perspective will cure that problem for you so it's a common one you forget you, you're in perspective mode and you find you can't select things just turn this perspective off and everything will work okay when you're doing um, rounds not just bends in sheet metal um, you often want to put brake lines on them so how do we turn these brake lines on this has been a feature that's been in sheet metal for some time but some people uh, aren't aware of how to place those brake lines or how to um, or how to adjust them so let's take a look
Okay, I've got a sheet metal uh, component here. It's in happens to be in ordered. Uh, if I go to the feature, right click on the feature and use the edit definition. Let's wait till the graphics catch up there. Click on edit definition and then go to the dialog box at the top of the screen. And I want to go to the flange options there. In the flange options you'll see there's a bending method and I can turn that on. Use tri triangulation to develop each bend. The number of resultant bends, so how many bends do we want to do in that corner, let's say uh, seven, and they'll put index marks on those. I want them to be 30 millimeters long. So they're going to be etch lines. Say OK to that, finish, and let me just rotate that round a little bit, and you can see the uh, you can see the lines on there. Let's see what happens with the flat pattern. So let's just update our flat pattern. That's normal, and I'm going to do a save as, save as flat, and I'll just I've already saved that, but we'll overwrite it. Say yes. And let's take a look at that. Um, just in a viewer here. What we'll see there, uh, just zoom in for you a little bit. Uh, we can see all the etch lines in there. Um, there's my outer loop. There's my etch lines. I can turn those off. That's the down center line there. And there's the etch lines. So it puts those on the appropriate layers in the DXF as we save that out. Okay. This is a question that's uh, quite often asked, and I probably most of you have uh, asked it from one time or, or, or thought about it from from time to time, is where do I find a list of the default shortcut keys for each solid edge environment? Now each environment can have its own set of commands as we know and there's shortcut keys on the keyboard. Where are they? How do I, how do I get the default set? Could I get a, a list of them please? Yes you can. So it's just a matter of, um, let's close out of this. Um, close one or two of these things. I'm just going to go to the part mode, just the synchronous part mode, and if I go up to my um, uh, quick bar up the top here, click on the customize menu, or the little pull down which is called customize, um, I'm going to go to the uh, customize menu, uh, I, I'm in the part synchronous mode, and what I want to look at here is the keyboard of course, so the first tab is correct and I want to look at all keyboard assignments. So it'll show me that a control and a K gives me a back view. Um, a control and an X is a cut and so on. So here's this list. And that's fine. So how do I deal with that? Well I can use the print button down here to print that out. And notice there's a print button down in the bottom, uh, bottom right. Quite useful. Now I think we've all seen this from time to time and been somewhat frustrated and if you're learning uh, synchronous it can be one of those things that can be a little off-putting. Uh, for instance over on the uh, left hand side here, on the right hand side, don't know my left from my right, over on the right hand side here I've got a, um, a round, a couple of rounds, there's a round on the lip of the edge and there's a round on a, uh, a feature there. I just want to delete that round, I don't want it anymore. Now the problem is, is that uh, the original square faces that would have made up the end of this um, feature here have been consumed by the rounds so those faces no longer exist. So I can't delete the round because there's nothing to replace them with. So that it, it cannot rebuild the solid model. Let's take a look at that. Um, I'll just roll that over so we can see that particular area. Zoom into it. And 
just tilt it up a bit for you. Okay, the, the, the rounds in question are these two. So let's select one, right click, and uh, try and select the delete. See what happens. We get an error message saying the selected items could not be deleted. And that's because if we try and delete that, that face will be consumed. So what I'm going to do is to draw on here and replace those um, rectangles. So let's just get aligned with the plane. F3 to lock on the plane and I'm just simply going to come straight up there across to that area there and straight up there okay so what I've got is close to what I want just make the uh, that one tangent to the top of there so it's right on it so you can see the little sketch I've drawn in there. Let's zoom up a little bit so you can see it a bit closer. And all I have to do is to select those regions, multiple select by pressing my spacebar. So I've selected those regions there. Click on the grab, grab and go handle and pull them down. And they're gone. Let's just take a look at the outside one here, um, this round here. So if I select it, that's good, it's a uh, 0.010 of an inch. I'm going to delete that. That deletes fine, not a problem. If I click on this round and try and delete that, well it didn't go back to a square face, it's actually made some sort of bevel in there. I'm going to back off on that and again I'm going to draw. So I bring up my drawing command. And draw on the ZX plane. Base plane. And I'll zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I want to come straight up there to zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better. So we want to attach those edges now. Um, let's take just go connect from the end of that onto that point there, and all I have to do is to fill that in. Whoop. Draw another line from the end of there to the end of that one there and select that region so having selected that region seeing it's ST4 all I have to do is to pick the grab and go handle put it on the center and rotate it uh, sorry pick the region And I want to add material and make it 360 degrees. There we go. Turn off the live section. So I've made that nice and flat. So it's a, as you can see, it's a slightly different approach. Let's just go back into this uh, region here for a moment to these rounds and put a smaller round in there. So notice I've made that smaller so it hasn't consumed the faces. So if I now select that round, either one of them will do or both of them, and delete it, it just goes away and those two faces heal. But if the round was so big that they merged into and consumed that face, then we couldn't delete them as you can see.
Here's another one that's um, confusing for people from time to time. They say, well, I can never control the hatching because as I zoom in, the hatching changes. And that's true. So let's have a look at the, uh, just as a, uh, in a 2D here, and let's zoom in. Let's zoom in towards this corner. And you'll notice as I zoom in, the hatching, there's more hatching coming up all the time. That's a problem. But it's because we allow um, zooming in and out uh, a very long way. So I would, if I wanted to zoom in there a great distance and still leave the lines as thin lines, then these have to change. Let me show you what I mean. What, what's going on here is, again, I need to go to my solid edge options and uh, I need to go to view and in the view this is only in draft you'll see display as printed so if I turn that on okay to that now when I zoom in look at what happens the hatching remains the same but the dimension lines and the edge lines and witness lines and everything get thicker as I zoom in because I'm zooming in as, as it was printed. It's like using a magnifying glass on the printed document. But the hatching remains the same. So it's up to you which way you want to display that. So let's go back to the full, go back to solid edge options, view, and it's display as printed. I'm going to turn that off again. Okay, um, getting close to the end now, but some little exciting stuff. Um, if you want to create an adjustable part and have it in a sub-assembly and then make the whole thing adjustable at the top level of an assembly, how do we go about that? Well, let's have a look. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is to... I'm just going to bring up my um, rear shock assembly and I don't have a spring, so I'm going to make a spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is new. It's an ISO part. And because I want to make a helix and make this helix adjustable on a few things, I'm going to go to an ordered part. He's going to make a helix. There's nothing clever about this at all. Just in the front view. Um, first thing I want is a circle. Six millimeters. Nothing too clever about this. You can all do this. I want a line to use as my axis. And I'm just lining it up on the... Uh, on the center there. Uh, we'll put some dimensions on that. Six millimeters. I want this to be uh, overall 50 millimeters in diameter, so I want that to be uh, 25. And I want the spring to be, to start with anyway, 115 millimeters long. Okay, close. Uh, sorry, before I close the sketch, I need to set up an axis of revolution. So the icons and the draw command here. And that's my axis of revolution. So I can close the sketch. Now down the bottom it's going to be saying um, click on the axis to identify the start of the helix. So it's a start end. And the helix parameters, I want to have the axis length and turns. And I want to have eight turns. And preview it. Okay, that's fine. Um, what we want to do now is uh, cut the ends so that they're, uh, the ends are cut off. So we just do a cut. Again, I'm going to draw on this plane. I'm going to draw a box just to uh, use as a cut item and then simply connect center of the end there onto that edge of the box, center of that. <coughs> To there, close the sketch, and then determine how I'm going to do the cut. Well, the cut's the wrong way. I want to be go back to that icon and cut the outside, and just make sure I cut through everything. And to finish this, of course, we might go to the part painter and uh, set everything to a nice yellow colour. 
Now what I'm going to do is to save this as spring. One more thing to do before we uh, move out of this is tools. Under the tools menu we see adjustable part. Click on that icon and now it says um, what's the variable that we're going to use to control the length of that. Well the variable here is going to be scroll down the variable tables it's going to be this dimension which is 115 so I pick that off and in the notes I'll just put uh, spring length. It's just a note, you don't have to put anything in there, but it's using this variable 422, which is the axis length to drive the uh, length of the spring. And how is it going to adjust? It's going to adjust like a spring, which is fairly obvious in this case. So we'll save that again. Okay, and I'm going to now just go to my uh, windows, and I want to go back to this rear shock. Okay, so we need to assemble the spring into this and make it an adjustable assembly. Okay, so going to my parts library, I have an option in here now um, of open documents. This is very useful. So it's stuff I'm working on. Here's my spring. So I want to bring our spring in. Now, because it's an adjustable part, the moment we bring it in, it's going to give us a dialog box saying, what do you want to do with this? How do you want to deal with this part? Excuse me for a second. That's better, the voice is getting a bit dry. How do you want to uh, place it? I want to place it as adjustable. It gives me the option, I can place it rigid if I want to, but i place it as adjustable. So. When it does that, it's actually going to bring up this dialog that says, OK, how are we going to drive this adjustable parameter? Well, I'm going to select measure minimum distance. A little box in here on the... Uh, I could pick um, a variable off this subassembly, but I'm going to use this measure minimum distance. OK, so where's the minimum distance? I need to... Uh, use my activate command here. I want to activate that. I need to activate that. So I'm going to measure the minimum distance between the face on there, turn that round a little bit, and the face on the retainer up this end. I'll just wait till you're, uh, you update there. You see that face there. So I've got those two faces. So it's across there it's going to be measured. And it says, OK, that distance in there is 117.3 millimeters. How do you want it to adjust? I want it to adjust like a spring. You say OK to that. If, you are, if you're quick and watching it after it, as it updates now, you'll see this, the spring adjust in length very slightly. It's only a few millimeters, of course. OK, so we're going to assemble this. And I'm going to pick the flat at this end to mate up to, to that flat. And then I'll use the uh, construction display command to give me the axis, show reference axis. Turn on the reference axis and we'll see our reference axis come on here. I'm going to select that as one of my alignments and I'll align that on the center of the shaft there. And that looks pretty good, but does it work? So if we go to our modify command, use our drag component, I'm not going to use any analysis or anything, don't need to. All I have to do is pick up that end there and push it in. And it will update. You'll see it push in, and then when I stop moving it, the spring updates. You notice it's much tighter or shorter. Now we can come in right tight there. So I'll come in up to there, probably about as far as I can go. I can put limits on this, of course, as we know, with ST4. I'm just going to reset that to what it was and we need to save this because I'm going to use this in the next uh, in the next thing I'm going to do because I'm going to put this now we've got this adjustable assembly I'm going to use this as a sub-assembly in a higher level assembly so let's switch windows and I've got a motorcycle in here let's wait till that comes up and we've got this linked rear suspension now the 
this is all set up so that the rear wheels free to move up and down and these links will articulate and the distance between uh, the pivot point here and this link uh, actuator will change. So again parts library uh, what's open it's this rear shock that's my whole rear shock it looks about right I'm going to drag that in. Now I don't want to use a configuration here so we can say whatever the default is I left that on from last time and I've also left a, an option on to say when I place it, place it as adjustable. If I get time I'll go back and show you that. So I want to pick up the, um, the cylinder in there, that's highlighted in green. We need to activate one of the parts on here, I'll activate that bracket and I'm just going to pick the cylinder in the bracket and it'll move the it'll move the uh, shock absorber and spring unit down onto there. Uh, one more thing I'll just pick up the plane and match it up to that face there. So we've got the left hand end of the shock absorber placed I'm now going to pick up the cylinder of the hole there and just match it to that cylinder and what we'll see is because the parts adjustable it'll adjust itself automatically to fit the assembly and that's happened and so there it is in place yep that's all well and good but does it work so let's drag a component using the modify and pick that back wheel and just move it up a little bit and you should see that update the spring shorten <coughs> and it updates and I'll do that again spring shorten again whole shock absorber unit shorten again and one more time now we're closing it up a bit we're, uh, I'll do it one more time as we use the um, back button on the interface here it will replay those moves if you like so that all works as expected just one thing to keep in mind in your assembly um, options so under solid edge options if we go to the assembly uh, tab or set You'll notice this one up here saying place is adjustable when this assembly is placed into another assembly. I had that turned on for the sub-assembly so that it automatically did that. So it will change shape to suit the um, assembly I'm bringing it into. If we had that turned off, it would force the um, assembly I'm bringing it into, and in this case it's the, uh, the link here, this link here, highlight it for you, to move to meet the um, to meet the um, sub-assembly that I'm bringing in I could then right click on this sub-assembly so if I select that sub-assembly and we've got the simplified adjustable uh, menu comes up well, let's see you can see that on your screen it is an adjustable assembly and I could make it a rigid assembly so if I make it a rigid assembly it will no longer adjust and it will go back to its original position I'll say OK to that and it's gone back to its original position and it's no longer adjustable so to reverse that it's select it, right click simplified adjustable menu and make it an adjustable part again OK, moving on This is one that's come up before and in fact came up yesterday I think. Um, they've got a synchronous sheet metal part and they want to cut out some text on it. Um, we can get to the text and we know how to use a, um, the right sort of type of stencil font um, but it doesn't seem to want to cut. How do, what do we do? Okay let's take a look. So 
we know where that is we go to the sketching menu and the sketching menu comes up we go to the text profile click on text profile I've got the solid edge stencil font already set up uh, I've set the size to 30 so I'm going to call it edge PLM and we say OK and I'm going to place it on that plane it's highlighted there so I place it on the plane that's good now all I should be all I should have to do is to just say cut and oh, select the sketch it won't select as you can see so something is amiss what okay the reason is uh, if we look here at this sketch back to my select tool you'll notice I've got relationship handles turned on but there are no relationship handles in this sketch so what I'm going to do is select it right click on it wait till the quick pick menu comes up and I'm going to select the sketch you'll notice it puts a steering wheel on the sketch I'm just going to pick the major vector here and pull it down to underneath somewhere it doesn't really matter where it is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the project to sketch icon which I'm just selecting I'll wait till your screens update select that and I'm going to project up onto this top face I'll click on the lock icon so I'm locked on there and now I'm going to use the option in my menu of wireframe chain okay and I can come down here and select that and then all I have to do is to tick it off and it will project it onto that sketch now you notice when it projects it because I've got my um, relationship handles turned on I can see all my, my relationship handles on there so it's true geometry where this one is like uh, I won't call it a polyline but it's like a dumb line type situation okay so I want to cut that through all I have to do is select all of those and I'll sweep selects a logical way of doing it so that's the region that's selected and pull it through done so you can see I just wait for your screen to update it's cut out there um, it, it's all done it's uh, what we wanted to see I can hide that uh, sketch I don't need that anymore okay I think I've probably bored you enough for today um, just you know the, some of the things we've been covering today and as I said before um, these uh, these sessions are recorded and be available from our website so you can review those at your leisure or review them at, at your leisure there's a lot of things that can frustrate us in our day-to-day -day work and uh, hopefully this has helped a little bit and we can probably say that Malcolm Fraser was in fact wrong life is meant to be easy so the bottom line is for all of us solid edge is really good at designing and editing parts in a, in a fast and easy manner um, and it it really is pretty simple to to use you just need to step back occasionally and uh, and have a look at some of the options that are available to you uh, and if you need more information as I said on our website and remember uh, we run a range of courses uh, that will um, make you more productive we can do bespoke courses for you know whatever you need to have okay um, I see some square questions already up on the uh, on the menu on the uh, bar here let me just get my uh, q a I already got some questions here um, uh, there is a question from Wayne here there are, there is no um, there's no interactive voice on this one it's just there's too many people and it's a little bit hard for uh, for me to manage by myself so uh, uh, it'll be a cacophony uh, I like the sound of my own voice too so yeah it, just type your questions in if you've got any Wayne um, and I see um, from Imad there's a question on assembly but I'm not sure what the question is uh, there so if anybody's got any questions now's the time to type them in um, on mass yes mass is available um, okay Wayne um, I'm not sure what the question is about mass but yes mass is available uh, in assemblies um, if I go back to one let's uh, see if we've got something there I can take a look at uh, this one here might do 
if we look at our um, properties um, we've got a, a property manager uh, uh, that uh, uh, sorry let's do this correctly sorry, I've just mucked up my screen a little bit here takes a while to update okay um, sorry I need to be in inspect and I've got a properties a physical properties uh, here and a properties manager let's bring up the properties manager and this is where you can manage everything uh, a lot of these things so these parts have got materials on them steel density uh, I can update everything so everything's up to date it'll just go through and now update everything for me as I'm doing that and then I can get my mass properties off on the, the other icon here when that's finished so it's updating all the documents in there there's about a hundred parts in there that it's updating I didn't actually need to do the update it was up to date so I say OK to that I can go to my mass properties and uh, pick off my mass properties and you can report those on drawings and things and I've done other uh, uh, webinars on those um, Uh, it'll be uh, Dan, Dan it's on our website uh, www.edgeplm.com.au under the support section uh, it'll be there in about two or three days time can you make the uh, can you make the video on the web site of a size that is viewable uh, yeah that the guys in Melbourne are going to look look that look after that um, I will put in a request that they do that. Um, is it possible to edit the text you added earlier? Uh, not directly because it's not text at that point, uh, Peter. It's just a collection of uh, faces. So it's, it's just like any other projection or anything. Uh, just redo it. Pretty quick to do. Um, YouTube. Yeah, we'll look at... Um, we are looking at ways of doing it on YouTube. It's not that simple, um, but it is it is something we are considering. How to suppress one part in assembly and ca calculate the rest without that part? Uh, Emma, that's a, a question you really need to direct at the support guys uh, because it's particular to what you're trying to do. I would say so. Um, it's a good idea to call our one three hundred number one three hundred eight eight three six five three and uh, bring it up with them. Uh, Rhett, what about assigning a mass to imported models? Yes, you can do that. Um, again, you might want to bring that up with support, but yes, you can do that. That's not something I'm covering specifically in here. This isn't about mass. It's just sort of uh, generalized stuff. But yes, you can assign mass to an imported part. No, uh, again, uh, from David, if the text was done in ordered, it was done in ordered actually, would it be then be possible to edit the text? No, the te it, once it's cut out, it is just a feature in the text, in, in, the, uh, in, in the part. It is no longer uh, text. I don't know if I've still got that part up, um, but uh, let's have a look. It might be. Yeah, it, this is synchronous, but if we look in here, they're just sets of faces. If it's ordered, it's the same thing. It's just, it, it is just a feature. That's all it is. It's not, a te it's not text as such at that point. It's text uh, up until, well, a sketch is not even a text. It's just a sketch. It's, uh, it's taking true type fonts which is what Windows uses. We don't use any peculiar fonts or bespoke fonts that, uh, that are unique to us. We just use true type fonts and it's just a program that puts uh, lines and arcs across the edges of those so we can use those as uh, items to construct. Okay, I think we're, um, we're starting to run out of questions. I've bamboozled everybody, have I? I hope I've answered all your questions. Um, yep, I'm looking at uh, we're looking at different ways to make the videos available to you. Um, 
we can see that that uh, can, um, can be an issue for some people. Uh, next time, our next clinic, uh, currently what I'm looking at is doing some stuff with um, uh, standard parts, both available from the web uh, and the, the various options that are available there, and we'll take a little bit of a look at um, standard parts uh, within SolidEdge itself, the standard parts environment. Okay, it just remains for me to thank you for, uh, for your attention. Uh, it's been slightly longer than I intended. We're up to nearly 50 minutes now. So I will say thank you, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye for now.